Hello guys, what's going on? Today I want to make a quick video about crowdfunding and share my thoughts on platforms like Kickstarter, recap a little bit on the expectations that people had when it was first announced that these kind of platforms exist a few years ago, and then look to where it got today. In the background you're going to see a little bit of Payday 2 gameplay, it's just some co-op gameplay I recorded recently. I'm not even sure we get away with the booty in the end, but as always you start off trying to play sneaky, as you see it here, and then it all gets out of hand and it ends up being a terrible massacre with thousands of people being dead. So looking at crowdfunding, the early days, I remember the first time I heard of it was the double fine adventure that Tim Schafer kind of brought up on Kickstarter and it was successful. And at that point it was like, oh my God, it's possible to get so much money to kind of do what you want. And everyone wants a new point and click adventure in the style of Day of the Tentacle, right? Uh, or Monkey Island. And so if the publishers don't want to fund it, yeah, well, fuck them. We're just going to fund it ourselves and we're going to show them how great games are made. And it was all this kind of entrepreneurish attitude that people had when Kickstarter first, first came up. And it was really the, the attitude of we have to show the publishers how to make a game and how it's done. So very kind of nearly naive in that sense. But at that time, I still believe that Kickstarter is going to be like a big new way of making games. And I didn't really see the reality coming as it kind of hit us a few years later. It was a great idea because you thought people are going to be in control of making decisions. You know, the, there's no person in between the actual developer and the audience so it's just a direct communication and if the developer wants to try out a feature you just ask the audience and say do you want this in your game or you make it a stretch goal and then people can pledge for it didn't really work that way and it kind of failed a little bit in the early stages there are a few examples for that i mean just to stick with the double fine adventure it's probably not a bad example not only did they run out of money half the way through and tim schafer had to go on youtube again and ask for more money because they didn't calculate it right but also the result i think you know not to say that broken age was a bad game it was all right but i don't think it was what people were hoping for really people wanted a kind of retro very funny humoristic day of the tentacle monkey island clone something that is really simple in in a way so i felt that not people were disappointed with broken age but it didn't really fulfill that so on one hand they couldn't fund it actually with the money that they originally pledged for and the result wasn't that great another example is this game that i think what's what's the name yo yokes cast uh, is a big youtube channel and they started to fund this game on kickstarter that was called yoke ventures and these guys play a lot of minecraft it really was something where you thought, okay, these guys know Minecraft in and out, so they're going to create an absolute amazing game. They gathered more than half a million dollars from more than 13,000 backers, so it's a considerable amount of money. Now they just announced that all their ambitious plans and everything they were planning for is not going to happen, and the game is never going to come out. And that is kind of the main problem with crowdfunding that kind of took a while to come out actually. It's more like that you pay for something that doesn't exist yet. At the same time, you might be able to participate in an early access version, kind of like an Elite Dangerous, where you have to pay 60 bucks just to participate in the beta test. I see a few problems with that because in the old time you were paid to be a beta tester. I understand that, you know, geeky nerds these days, they really want want to be first they want to be the first ones to try something out and they're really proud if they can take part in the beta but at the same time i mean seriously 60 bucks to participate in a beta and give feedback to the developers how to fix their their shit it's just not really something that i find right and it kind of takes really weird shapes there Another great example that I think has to be mentioned is Star Citizen. Uh, Chris Roberts, I mean, he had so many fans out there. People were hoping for a new space sim for such a long time. Then he put his new game Star Citizen on Kickstarter. He also crowdfunded separately on his own project website. And he gathered by now 47 million. Obviously, he did it in a really smart way because he sold all these spaceships even before you can actually fly them to the people and you could just buy the model or you just still can buy the model put it in your your hunger virtually and walk around it get into it and get an idea of what to expect and it really creates a lot of like mouth watering and all these space sim people and people spend extreme amounts of money for these virtual models which till this day i can't really understand i'm a huge fan of wing commander i love privateer I still didn't fund this game because I don't think it's a good idea to fund something that doesn't exist yet. If Star Citizen comes out one day, I'm going to buy the full game and I'm going to play it. 
However, there are also a few downsides to that as well, because they make the whole process of development really transparent. So you go to their YouTube channel, you can see interviews with the developers, how they model their ships, you know, how they model the surface stations on all the planets and all that stuff you can see. Maybe I don't want that, you know, I mean, obviously I don't have to go there and watch it, but I'm so keen on the game that I kind of I can hardly stop myself from watching it. But then just recently I saw that they're going to build this massive base inside an asteroid, which is a great idea, but I will never be surprised by that base inside an asteroid, if you know what I mean. You know, I'll never fly through space and star cities and think, oh my god, this is not an asteroid, it is actually a base. I will always know that it is a base and I will fly past it like, oh yeah, that's the part that I saw two years ago, how they modeled it, and I actually saw the interview with the guy who designed it and just takes the magic out of it a little bit. So there are, I think there are a few realities to crowdfunding that people woke up to in the last years, just kind of putting it to the reality test. And that at the same time reveals also in terms of gaming at least, the importance of a publisher and that a publisher is not always bad because it puts it through another layer of quality control. And while this quality control sometimes is just inappropriate and they might make decisions that you think are wrong, Still, it does help to create a final game that is actually, most of the time, a finished product. Obviously, Kickstarter is not only about games. There are many other products and projects that have been funded through Kickstarter, and I'm not going to go too much into those because, obviously, I'm a gaming channel. But there are a few things that you have to mention, I guess. Like, for instance, there are little curiosities uh, that happened on Kickstarter that kind of make me smile when I see them. Like the guy who tried to get 10 pounds to make a potato salad and he ended up with 55,000 and, you know, 20 different stretch goals. He's going to make tons of potato salad now. It's fun. It's fu it's a new platform for people to play around with funding. It's at the same time kind of a research platform where you can see, look, I made a product or I have this idea for a product. You put it out there. Are people actually interested in it? Amazing projects like Oculus Rift kind of started on Kickstarter. It was the first time where I saw that. So amazing new technology comes out of it and it really filters uh, people's interest through this idea of crowdfunding. At the same time, it creates new jobs. If you want to do a marketing campaign these days and you want to go over Kickstarter, you hire a Kickstarter professional, someone who really knows how to set up uh, your page, how to get people interested in your concept, how to promote it, how to set the right stretch goals at the right amounts of money and how to manage expectations as well. So it kind of created a whole new branch, you know, in, in itself, which is quite interesting, kind of similar to social media manager or something where people these days just look at the Facebook and Twitter profile of companies. So where does that leave us? Is crowdfunding a good thing? Is it a bad thing? I think it's not bad because overall it still puts increased pressure on publishers. While all these games or most of the games that you see on Kickstarter are not really a threat to publishers because if you get $500,000 for a game, it's you know not really a budget that a big publisher like Activision or EA or any one of these guys would actually work with. But still, it kind of flags up that there are a lot of people out there who still have interests in other games and a lot of these kind of retro games, pixel games, this whole wave of retro indie and pixel games I think came mainly through Kickstarter. People showed that there is an interest in these games and indie developers were motivated by seeing that and then they developed all these games and if you look at Steam and stuff they're actually selling not that bad. However, generally in terms of games, I have to see that so far, except Star Citizen, I haven't seen any game and obviously that's not even finished, so also that doesn't really count, but except that game, I haven't seen anything that is really top-notch and really impressive that came out of Kickstarter. So it still remains to be seen. I kind of wait for a proof of concept. I want to see a game that was crowdfunded and where the actual delivery of the game actually delivered what was promised in the first place and then the game goes through all the success that everyone would hope it would be. So I haven't seen any of that yet, so that's a bit of a shame. So there's not even a proof of concept that Kickstarter actually really works, in my personal opinion. My main problem with Kickstarter is that you pay and in the end, you might get nothing. You know, there's a risk of paying for something like with the Yolks Cast game, and in the end, it never happens, despite them getting a ridiculously high amount of money. Uh, at least it looks like that in the first place, exceeding their goals by far. So 
maybe there's another solution. Maybe there can be a new platform that is similar to Kickstarter, but where you maybe get a percentage of the overall revenue of the game. So if you pledge, let's say, $50 for a game, that gives you actually 0.02% of the final revenue of the game. So whatever happens to the game and whatever the outcome is, if it gets on the market and it returns, you know, whatever, a few million, you will get 0.0 whatever percent of that amount. It's a bit like a stock or something where you actually own a small part of the company or in this case a small part of the game and you do have a bit of revenue that is guaranteed because you trusted the project, right? And it makes it impossible that in the end you might get nothing and not even a game that you can play. A little bit like an insurance that you get back for your investment and your trust that you uh, had into the project. So these were really my thoughts on crowdfunding and on all these kind of Kickstarter platforms. I'm, I'm sure there are a million more points that I could highlight that I've kind of forgot in this video. Would be amazing if you leave your thoughts in the comment section below. I'd love to hear those. Maybe there are games that were really big and successful and turned out, you know, majorly successful that I just never heard of or other products. So let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. If you enjoyed the video or if it was of help a little bit, you can leave me a like. That would be appreciated. You can subscribe to my channel. I do all kinds of video game, let's plays and commentaries like this most of the time, if I have the time. So hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.